Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Brianna Denard here, and we are going to be having another scientist story time today. And we are talking about a man who has got some range, from working on the Manhattan Project to build the atomic bomb, to archaeological expeditions, and even some ideas about dinosaurs. Luis Alvarez was an amazing scientist with a lifelong passion for science and a brain full of ideas. Luis Alvarez was born in 1911 in San Francisco, California, and from 1932 to 1936, he got his bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degree all from the University of Chicago. Following the University of Chicago and all of his degrees in a crazy short amount of time, apparently, uh, he went back to California, to the University of California, and worked there at the radiation lab. In between working there at the radiation lab, he also would kind of get loaned out to other labs. So he worked at the MIT Radiation Lab, the Metallurgical Laboratory at the University of Chicago, and then at Los Alamos on the Manhattan Project. During World War II, in addition to his work on the Manhattan Project, which I'll talk about in a second, he actually helped pioneer three critical radar systems that helped protect vessels and other things from planes and flying bombs that were being fired by the German side. And then while working on the Manhattan Project, which was the United States' um, group of scientists trying to build the atomic bomb before any other country on either side of the war could do so, he helped work on the detonator that would fire the second plutonium bomb that they built. And he also ended up being like a flying observer when they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. So he was actually there when that happened. Following World War II, he continued to kind of work in the field of high energy physics. So high energy physics has to deal with anything smaller than an atom or even smaller than a proton, neutron, and electron. So if we talk about atoms, and I don't know why I'm doing this when I say atoms, when we talk about atoms, uh, most of us probably learned in school at some point growing up that atoms, instead of an atom, they're made up of protons, a positively charged molecule, or not molecule, positively charged particle, neutrons, which are neutrally charged, and then electrons, which are negatively charged. But there are particles even smaller than that uh, inside of atoms making up atoms. And that's what high energy physics and Luis Alvarez was studying. Luis Alvarez was working on advancements to a device called a hydrogen bubble chamber. A hydrogen bubble chamber is something used to visualize the pathway and measure subatomic particles as it travels through the instrument. And this works by filling it with basically a liquefied gas. So this is like oxygen in the air or hydrogen, different things that exist normally as a gas state that we have now under a bunch of pressure turned into a liquid. So a hydrogen mobile chamber is using liquefied hydrogen. And this liquefied gas is also, to add one kind of step of weirdness, is also superheated. So superheating is kind of similar to super cooling that I talked about in my ice snow video where in super cooling, you are taking the freezing point of a material and you're getting something below it, but it hasn't frozen. So for an ice crystal, for example, with water, water gets super cold, it gets underneath its freezing point, but it doesn't turn into a solid until it's hit or disturbed or something and then it will freeze. Superheating is when you get something above its boiling point, but it's still liquid, it hasn't evaporated yet. And we do this using pressure as well. So we have a liquefied gas that is superheated under a bunch of pressure. And when we send subatomic particles through that superheated liquefied gas, it's quite, quite the sentence, it results in a bunch of little bubbles in the chamber because those particles moving through the superheated liquefied gas all of a sudden vaporize the liquefied gas around it around where the particles are at and results in tiny little bubbles that you can track and measure. The like direction in which that bubble path is moving can tell you more about the charge of the particle. There's all sorts of other information you can get about the subatomic particle all from the hydrogen bubble chamber. So using his kind of new and improved hydrogen bubble chamber, Luis Alvarez was able to find 70 new subatomic particles, which is a crazy amount. Uh, the idea that you could even split an atom in half and get like enough energy to create the atomic bomb wasn't even kind of discovered or thought of until about the 1930s. So nuclear science at this time period is very young. 
There's a lot to be learned and scientists are all really crazy over it. So Luis Alvarez finding 70 new subatomic particles is really crazy and awesome advance in science. And for this, he was awarded the, nu the nuclear prize, the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1968. Kind of following this high energy physics stuff and using uh, Luis Alvarez's like, his knowledge about subatomic particles, he got recruited for some archaeological expeditions to try to discover like chambers in pyramids in Egypt and that kind that didn't really work out it didn't work the way he thought it would uh, or the the way the archaeologist archaeologist thought it would but kind of working on archaeological expeditions also led him to strike up more of a collaboration with his son Walter who was a geologist at also the University of California and through this collaboration of the two of them together, they're the ones who actually proposed the theory that the dinosaurs went extinct because of a giant meteor or asteroid hitting the planet. So if you've ever heard that, um, that dinosaurs went extinct because something hit the planet, that was the result of a theory put forth by Luis and Walter Alvarez. Crazy, all right? We went from atomic bomb to subatomic particles to archeological expeditions to dinosaurs all in the lifetime of this one man. <laughs> Crazy range. <laughs> Luis Alvarez died in 1988 as a result of cancer, but there is no doubt that he lived a very full life of a lot of scientific discoveries and a lot of different interests and passions. I think that's really a theme with a lot of these scientists is we may know them in history for like discovering one thing or being really into this, but they also did a lot of things. Uh, like I said, Luis Alvarez was working in geology and physics. We had Jean Villapreux, who was a dressmaker and uh, invented the aquarium. We have all of these people who are doing multiple things and multiple interests. You don't have to define yourself to one thing. Follow what is really your passion and you'll always have a really exciting and fulfilling life. So today's fun fact is that in addition to all of the stuff that I just talked about for Luis Alvarez's life, he also had like 22 different patents and served on the board, one of the administrative boards that invested the JFK assassination. What an interesting man. All right, please be sure to drop that rating for the fun fact in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. Tell all your friends about Luis Alvarez. Scientists are awesome. Uh, please follow me on Instagram. I will post uh, every Tuesday and Friday and keep it sciencey. Luis Alvarez had was doing it all. Uh, in a joke. <laughs> so today we're going to talk a little bit about his life and all of his different passions throughout his life and a lifelong passion to science. Oh, what was I supposed to say?